Thank you for joining Inspire International Ministries. Now for the announcements. For the next five weeks, we will be doing a series called 911 Help. I need to talk to someone. Don't miss this opportunity to understand what mental health is truly about. God wants his people free and delivered once and for all. Hey church family, did you know that Inspire has its own YouTube channel? That's right, you can see every replay of our services on YouTube. Just check it out on Sundays after 2 p.m. and enjoy hours and hours of the Word. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, welcome, welcome to church this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. I want you to get your hands together and begin to clap. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to worship.
He's called your friend today.
just worship him right now. If you have to lay out on the floor, uh, come on, I just want you to worship him and stretch out your hands and begin to say, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you for keeping us all week. You're so precious, Jesus. You 
Yes, you worthy, Jesus. Ah, come on, just love on him. Love on him. You're so magnificent, Jesus. Ah, we adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. Oh, God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end.
Growing up for me was um, a little bit different than most people. My mother was uh, a heroin addict, so was my stepfather, and a lot of times I think that that was the only thing they ever really had in common. Life was a struggle. It was a constant, a constant battle of survival, I guess is the best way to put it. There was nights that I remember sleeping in our car. There was nights that I remember 
sleeping underneath the tire swings that I played on at school. My mom was abusive. I have scars from where she put her cigarettes out on me. And I have scars from, from just countless beatings. But through all of that, still, <laughs> I sound crazy, but I just wanted so badly for her to love me. I wanted so badly for her to have affection towards me, to adore me. With my stepdad, um, he shared the addiction, but he, he never got abusive, he never got aggressive. He would protect me from her. But my dad had contracted hepatitis from using, and he got really sick, and he passed. And um, that, was the, that was the hardest thing for me, losing my dad. He, like I said, was the, the closest thing to, to a parent that I knew. Um, and I think as an, he was the only adult that I trusted. Um, but he passed, and I remember coming home from the hospital that night with my little sister and my mom. And I remember just sitting in the living room and watching her shoot up until she turned blue. And I called 911. And that was the last time I ever saw my mom. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just so honored today to be able to just pour into your spirit. I believe that this is an hour of deliverance. This is an hour of healing. I know we've been caught and stuck in this pandemic, but I remember when this when the, this first started, the Holy Spirit said to me, he talked to, he ministered to me from the book of Exodus, and he was talking about the ninth plague where it was so dark that it says that they couldn't even see their hands in front of their faces. And this is the, the people in Egypt. He said, it was dark in Egypt, but light in Goshen. God promised me that his people would experience light and provision during this hour. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world system because we don't live in the world systems. We are citizens of a kingdom that is fully supplied, that not that is not that is not slack in provision. So I want you to shift your mind and shift your thinking right now that whatever you need from God, I don't care if it's materially, financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically, there is provision, supernatural, abundant provision available in the kingdom of God. I really want to minister you to from, I'm going to minister you from a place of where I've been. I'm not just talking at you, I'm talking to you because I have been in this place. You know, I have um, had a, a string or several just broken relationships in my life where I use those relationships to cover the pain and the anguish of sexual and emotional trauma. But I believe in my heart and spirit that God has slowed down the world, slowed down the economy so that we can deal with some things that we've been covering up for years, that we've been running from for years, that we've been hiding for years. We know that it happened, but we don't want to connect to it and attach to it. This is the season that God is going to bring you front and center with your trauma. I coach a lot of people. As well as being a business coach, I am a mental health coach. And people's mental health is very important to me. It's something that I know that God has called me to and given me and giving me an anointing to break the yoke of trauma off of the lives of his people. And I've seen so many people healed and so many people delivered. And it is not an instantaneous delivery all the time. It is a journey. It is not a sprint. I've been dealing with this trauma all my life, but God, every season that God brings me into, he gives me a deeper level of healing and understanding about my life, who I am, my purpose, and my destiny. I remember the Holy Spirit a couple of months ago was talking to me about Jesus being the vine. He said that I am the vine, but my father is the vine dresser, or another translation says the husband man. And the husband man was the person that would take care of the vine throughout the lifetime of the vine. And Jesus 
it, even though he's the vine dresser, God is caring for us throughout the, our entire life. And his job is to prune us and pluck us and purge us and heal us and cleanse us. And that is his responsibility. But we can, I heard um, an old saint say that because we are living sacrifices, that the problem is, is that we can climb off the altar. I decree in this hour that you're going to bind yourself to the horns of the altar and you're not going to get up until God is finished doing what he needs to do in your life. This is a season where God is purging me in a level that I have not experienced in 50 something years. I am 56 years old and I'm thinking, God, I didn't think I'd be dealing with this trauma at my age. But God is such a gentleman. He's not going to open you up all at once. He's going to open you up season by season, yeah. instance by instance. He, he wants you to heal completely. You can't heal all at once. But the one thing that he said to me as him being the, the vine dresser is that it will be a greater season of purging and pruning. So a greater season of fruitfulness. If you want to move into a greater season of fruitfulness, I don't care. I have a burden for marketplace people. God wants to use you in the marketplace. He wants to promote you. He wants to advance you. But he can't advance you where you are right now. So endure the pruning. It's not the enemy. It's God pruning you. And so one of the things that the Holy Spirit has just really been dealing with me, specifically in this last month or so, is how traumatized the body of Christ is. And most of the trauma is latent trauma. It's stuff that's been hidden and buried in your soul and buried in your spirit since you were 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. But God is calling for that thing because there, as you know, those of you that are psychologists, you understand that there's such things as as suppressed memories and then repressed memories. Mm. Suppressed memories are memories that we intentionally suppress and we don't want to think about it. But repressed memories are memories that we just don't that we get rid of. We don't think about it anymore. It's so pressed deep in our soul that we forgot the incident happened. God is coming for those in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. He wants to bring those things up so that you can completely be healed and whole yes. in this hour. But it, it requires your participation. So I'm going to read to you out of um, John chapter 5. And it's, and it's a familiar story, but God has really been ministering to me. I'm going to start at verse 5, and it says, Sometimes, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered porches. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed, the traumatized, the broken, the wounded, the shattered. And one was there, one was there had been an invalid for 38 years. God wants to deal with the trauma that you have been dealing with for years. Your husband doesn't know about it. Mm. Your best friend doesn't know about it. Your children doesn't know about it. Mm. And it said when Jesus, verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to be made well? Yeah. So I want to ask you that question because sometimes when we have wounds and traumas, they become so comfortable to us that they become a part of us and we're used to dealing with and navigating and negotiating around them without actually touching them. So he asked them, do you want to be made? Well, I want to ask you the question and I want, to, I want you to answer yourself honestly. Do you want to be made well? Because sometimes when we're wounded and we're traumatized and we're broken, we learn to take advantage of other people because of our wounds and our trauma. And it becomes more of an advantage and a benefit than it becomes a wound or something that, that can harm us. So do you? I want to ask you again, do you want to be made well? That is a question that the Father is asking you today. I had to ask myself that question, do I want to be made well or do I want to keep putting a band-aid on a wound that needs stitches? Ooh, come on, that's good. In verse 7, he, is, he said, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me. 
into the pool when the water is being stirred. So the water was stirred once a year. It wasn't stirring all the time. And while the water was being stirred, they believed that that was an angelic visitation and people could be, and people were supernaturally healed. So it wasn't happening all the time. I believe that we're in a season right now where God is stirring the waters. And I don't want you to miss your opportunity in him. The water is stirring, but do you want to be made well? Yes, yes, that's good, that's good. And, it said, while, and he said, while, the man said, while I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. So if this is not the season to be looking at what somebody else is doing. Mm. This is the season to focus on what God wants to do in your life if you want to be made well. And then verse 8, it says, And Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And it said, At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And I, that's really important. So Jesus overrode all his excuses, all his problems that he'd been talking about for 38 years. Nobody would help That's me. Nobody would do anything for, but for me. No one would give me an opportunity. Nobody would give me a chance. Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. He was overriding every single excuse the man had because we're not going to get well and whole because we're relying and depending on another person. We're going to get well and made whole because we are relying on the power of yes. the Holy Ghost. We're, going, we're relying on the power of Jesus to heal men, set free, and make you whole. And he's going to override every single excuse you have had to remain crippled and wounded yes. and broken in the name of Jesus. And it says, I'm going to say this again, and it took, this took place on a Sabbath. And so I heard a prophet say, because I don't want to preach. I want to kind of break this down and give you a little bit of instruction because I don't like to leave people hanging. When you go have surgery or you go, you go to a doctor because something's wrong with you, you get a sheet of either of prescriptions and instructions. And I told the Holy Spirit, I don't ever want to deliver a prophetic word without giving your people a set of instructions to implement and, and act and activate that word in their life. So I heard a prophet say a month or so ago, he said, this is not a pandemic. This, for the people of God, this is not a pandemic. This is a forced Sabbath. God is commanding That's you good. to rest. In the That's book good. of Hebrews, it said that the children of Israel, they did not enter into the promised land. They did not enter into a place of healing and deliverance because they would not rest. This is a season to rest in Jesus. Yes. This is a se this is a forced Sabbath where he is commanding you to rest. In the book of Exodus, I believe in chapter 9, it says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Yes. God has forced a Sabbath on you so he can heal you, Jesus. heal your relationships, oh, on, heal good. these latent wounds and traumas yes. because he has need of you. When Jesus was going into the city, he said, loose the coat yes. because I have need of thee. God has need of you. You have gifts and talents. There's purposes and destinies, books, ideals, inventions, songs, ministries that God has put in your spirit yes. that we are going to need in this next season of the church. Because God is purging the church as we know it. Ooh, come on. And this That's is the one good. thing that this is one of the instructions. This is one of the things he said. He said, in this fourth Sabbath, that we have to reset the table of the Lord. Ooh. So what does that mean? That's good. The table of the Lord is communion. Mm. Jesus said, I am Ooh. the bread of life. Mm. And that the blood still speaks. The blood of Jesus is still speaking. When he was hung on the cross and he hung his head and his blood began to drip, all the blood began to drip from his body and he hung his head and died and said, it is finished. The Bible says that the ground split open and 500 people came out of the grave. This is your resurrection season. This is your resurrection hour. If you would reset the table of the Lord. I've been taking communion now for about three weeks. I heard Creflo Dollar, he said, you take communion like the doctor prescribed it. Because communion is what's going to heal you. Your medicine is not going to heal you. The doctor can't heal you. But the blood of Jesus 
and the bread of Jesus and his bread of life is going to heal you yes. completely and make you whole in this hour if you want to be made well. And the next thing God, the Holy Spirit showed me, you have to break your alliance with demonic forces. I had a dream that I called a well-known prophet that was part of a healing ministry. And I asked him to pray for me. And he prayed briefly for me. He said, but I can't deliver you from a demon you're partnering with. Some of you are partnering with demonic spirits. I don't care if it's anxiety, worry, depression, illness, sickness, infirmity. You are partnering with that spirit. Some of what you experience is not natural. It is a spiritual attack. It is a spiritual assignment. It is something that has been in your bloodline for hundreds of years. So we cancel everything in your bloodline right now. We we deconstruct every single altar that has been set up in your your bloodline right now. And you have to break your alliance with those demonic spirits. I don't care. There is an element of being comfortable with demonic presence, especially if we've experienced it for so long. But God is is coming against that spirit of depression, fear. God God is not giving you you the spirit of fear, the spirit of infirmity. I don't care if it's physical or emotional. God wants to make you well and make you whole. Because remember the man stood at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. And the Bible says that if a thief be found, he has to restore sevenfold and that God would give you double for your trouble. Yeah, so yeah, I decree yeah, yeah, yeah. everything that you lost in this season of infirmity that God is going to restore to you a hundredfold and give you double for your trouble. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. The next thing, the next instruction is the power of confession. And this is my last point. The power of confession. Um, Francis, I believe his name is Francis Frangipane. He wrote a book many, many years ago called Hung by the Tongue. You will have whatever you say. Don't think that what is coming out of your mouth is not important. You have to fix your confession. You have to say what God is saying. I say speak the word and speak the word only. A friend of mine used to say that the labor of a righteous man is to work the word. You're going to get out of this hole, out of this infirmity by declaring the word of God over your life, over your situation, your marriage, your circumstance, your children, your business, your ministry. You have to declare the word of God. And so I thank you. Let me just pray for you for a minute. And I Mm. ask the Holy Spirit to seal this word in your heart Mm. and in your spirit. I decree it's just not going to be another message that you listen to, but that you're going to take the instruction of the Holy Ghost and you're going to implement it in your life if you want to be made well. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. This is amazing. You know, I don't know about you, but that message just like hit on so many points. Um, I know with me, uh, and as I was listening to you, you know, I had a couple questions that I want to ask you. And the first question I'd like to ask you is, um, you talked about a hundred generations or a hundred back in your generations. Mm-hmm. And the thing that came up to me was curses. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that there's somebody out there wondering like, what are generational curses? Mm-hmm. Okay, so there, there's two things. There's generational curses. A curse is something that is spoken over a family. Gotcha. And iniquity is something that's in the bloodline. Mm. And so curses can follow families if someone doesn't know a curse has been spoken over families, but curses can be easily can- canceled. And the Bible says that we are no longer cursed because remember the, the prophet, the soothsayer actually, Balak, Balak, was it Balak or Barak? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Balak, I think. Balaam came, the king called him to curse the children of Israel. And and it's in the book of Numbers. He said, I can't curse what God has blessed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said on the cross that he's redeemed us from the curse of the law. So curses can be broken, but iniquities are things that follow you, follow and flow through your bloodline. And the Bible says the the iniquity of your fathers will carry on on to the third and fourth generation. I actually did a training a few years ago Mm -hmm. called Purifying Your Bloodline. Mm -hmm. Because we have to understand 
you know, what had some iniquities we know about. If you see a generation of people that are alcoholics, you know, there's a spirit of addiction mm -hmm. or you, everybody in your family was molested or there's incest or these type of egregious things happening and they're happening in every single generation. You know, that's an iniquity in your bloodline and iniquity is a bent or a twist, yeah. something twisted in your bloodline. And so we have to take authority over those things so that like I can look at my children's lives and see you know, that I have successfully broken some iniquities in our bloodline. Like, I'm going to be very transparent. I've had abortions. I've had, you know, um, divorces. And I see those things not happening, ha not transpiring to my children. My mother went through those things. My daughter is 28 years old, saved woman of God, and still a virgin waiting for her husband. Wow. So I praise God that that iniquity has, been, has broken. I've broken that in my bloodline. I would tell my children, if the only reason I'm in your life is to halt these curses. Yeah. And I'm not curses, I'm sorry, these iniquities, iniquities. That I'm grateful for that place and that presence in your life. And with iniquity sometimes comes altars. Like God, I don't know why I feel like I need to be so transparent today, but yeah. even today, the Holy Spirit had me repent. I've been listening to um, praying with a woman out of Africa, Buja, Africa, mm -hmm. and she's talking about these altars that have been set up yeah. in the lives of people. We have to de deconstruct these demonic altars yeah. that have followed from generation to generation. And the Holy Spirit had me pray and repent for abortions that I had in the past, not understanding, I wasn't saved. He said, but that is a spirit of Molech yeah. that sacrificed children and, and wanted the blood of children for sacrifice purposes. And God mm -hmm. had me repent for that, for that in, the shedding of innocent blood and for robbing those, those children of their purpose and yeah. destiny that he had given them. And in the spirit, I saw a huge antiquated door shut Wow. And I, I heard that door slam shut. So I want to talk to you that if you've had an abortion, that God wants to heal your womb. I don't care how long ago it was, that he is forgiving you. Because one of the things that he said, and you can interrupt me. At no, point, no. But one please. of the things I talked about, the pool, Bethesda, Bethesda means the house of mercy. God told me in this season, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you through the bowels of mercy. I'm going to heal you through the bowels of mercy. Mercy is what we don't deserve, yes. what we didn't earn. Mm -hmm. We may be guilty for what we have done, but he said, I'm going to cleanse you and heal you through the bowels of mercy. Yeah. So if the mercy of God is being released for every iniquity, every sin, every failure, every fault, every, every area you faltered in, God wants to heal you completely and wholly yes. in this season and in this hour. Woo, wow, that is powerful. You know, talking about trauma, you know, uh, I really, you mentioned your kids. So let's talk about that. What are some things that you've done to make sure your kids are not experiencing the traumatic situations that you have? So one, I think one of the first things that I did is I told them about my life. Mm -hmm. I was transparent with them about my life, where I've been, what I've done. And every victory that I have in the Holy Ghost, I share with my daughters. I mm -hmm. share with my children because I want you to know what I've been through and what I've overcome. And yeah. that that spirit will try to visit you because iniquity is a visitation. Ooh. Come on, that's it's a good. visitation in every single generation. Like some, so I shared with them my experiences. I mm. told them what I've been through. I shared with them, you know, the experience that I knew about my family and what I watched my mother and my grandparents yeah. go through on my mom's side. I didn't know my father's side of the family, so I'm gonna touch on that when you don't know who you're the yeah. other side of your family. And so, and then I taught them how to war in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I taught them how to declare the word of God over their lives. I anointed them with oil. I prayed over them. Mm -hmm. You know, I lived a holy life before them. Not that I haven't been, I'm not perfect by any means, but I've lived to the best of my ability, a holy life for them so they could see what a life of a believer looked like when the hand of the Lord was on them. Yeah. So I taught them to what to look for. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? I didn't know in my mother's life, I didn't, my mother died when I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was sharing with my daughter, it seemed like when my mother died, because one of the ways that spirits and iniquities are transferred is through death of another person. I felt like when my mother died, because I was the one closest to her, or looked the most like her, people thought I was her, very similar in gifting and anointing. It's like my life just completely took a turn for the left. 
and everything that she had gone through, it just brought my, I watched my life repeat the whole pattern mm. of her life. And I, I just want to say this, even in this, in my, my time, so I want to say that your personal time with God is so crucial. Your time of worship, your time of confession, your time of reading the word, and, and not just reading the word, but meditating it and quoting it and declaring it over your life. The Holy Spirit, you know, I had, you know, marriages that were on a nine year cycle. Mm. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, I want you to cover those those years in your daughter's lives and marriages mm. because there is going to be a visitation around that cycle. I watched my mother go wow. through the same cycle. So I covered se years seven, eight, nine and ten with the blood of Jesus. So that iniquity did not have power to set up an altar. Ooh. Woo! In Man. their marriages, the way it, it happened with my mother, my sisters, and me. Ooh. And so, God, your quiet time, I believe your quiet time in this season is so crucial. God is giving you super natural wisdom. I heard a woman say, she said, talking about, you know, the restoration mm -hmm. principle that he would restore double for yeah. your trouble. She said, whatever you lost, God, whatever months you lost, like she was talking about the year 2020. If we lost, whatever months you lost, God is going to give you those months in the future and in the past. Ooh, come on. And so it. I looked at where, okay, I hit a, a pothole in my life. That was exactly 19 months ago, right after I did assume the position, because I didn't understand what I was opening and what altars I was troubling in the spirit. Yeah, yeah. And that and, she, and that 19 years, 19 months doubled is 38. Mm. 38 years of infirmity. He said, I'm going to heal you from 38 years Ooh, of infirmity. come on, that's good. It happened when I started when I was 18. I'm 56 years old. That, 56 years old now, that's 38 years that God yeah. is cleansing me from and healing me from where trauma has been allowed to just, you know, run through my life for those years. Ooh. You know, I know that a lot of us are, are people are probably watching thinking, you know, is it something that you could just pray away or is trauma something that I have to get help for or what do, like what's my next step? What do I do to to just finally overcome? I'm tired of running from these demons. I'm tired of fighting, you know, these things that are going on inside. What do they do? I would say initially get get some professional help. I got professional help. I went to counseling for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And so professional help is, is so crucial. There are people that are anointed yeah. to help you uncover these things. There's a book that a friend of mine told me about. It's called The Body Keeps the School. And some of you are dealing with sicknesses and infirmities because there's a latent trauma that has not been dealt with. Ooh. But get some professional help. Find somebody either in the church or a professional that is anointed yeah. to uncover these things and gently uncover them so they don't jar you and bring you into a place of immobility. Yeah. He talks about there's a young man that was in the military in this book, the young man in the military, where he was he was excelling in the military mm -hmm. and a priest that he would talk about all the time got arrested for child molestation and his girlfriend asked him, are you sure he didn't molest you? And he completely changed because it was what we talked about, a repressed memory. Mm -hmm. And so you want to get with somebody that's anointed, that can cover that area of yeah. your life and bring you through that place gently because sometimes coming through trauma is traumatic. Yeah. You know, so get some help. Always get the word. What does the word say about you? Who does Jesus say you, you are? Because trauma mars your ability to see yourself accurately. Yeah. It, it lowers your self-esteem. It decreases your value about yourself. And so find out what God has said about who you are and what you're called to do. I believe the thing that anchored me throughout these 36 years is I knew that I had a call on my life and I had a place in the kingdom yeah. and that God was going to heal me so that I could fulfill my purpose because my commitment and my vow to him is I'm not dying. I'm not going to die early. I'm going to die empty. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to empty out on this earth everything that the Holy Spirit, everything that God put in me when I was in my mother's womb. And find somebody that you can partner with, someone that's safe and and has integrity and character that you can say, hey, girl, can you pray for me today? Yeah. You know, hey, God, can you pray for me today? You know, we don't always have to go through all the details and the rigmarole telling everybody the whole story, but just to know that you have somebody in your corner that knows how to get a prayer through yes. and who knows how to declare on you because we always need reinforcements in the spirit. Yes.
Thank you, Jesus. Wow. 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 I don't know about you, people of God, but that was powerful. Thank you so much, Minister Yvonne. Oh, you are such a blessing to the body of Christ. Uh, and if you joined us in the middle of that, I want to encourage you once we get this we finish this service, we will actually have this uploaded on YouTube at least by two o'clock today, and you'll be able to look at it, or you can go to uh, Inspire International Ministries, our Facebook channel, and you can replay this service. But I'm telling you right now, ooh, she, the Lord used you, uh, minister to, to really, really uncover some things that many of us have been struggling with our entire life. And I don't know about you, but as I, as I was listening to her, there were some things that came up in me that I have decided ah, to be made well. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to ask you the question again. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want it? Do you want it? And if the answer is yes, Jesus can handle anything. His blood is so powerful <laughs> that it opened up the earth when he gave up the ghost and, 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 and died for our sins. Jesus is so powerful that his spirit opened up that grave and he raised from the dead to new life. And the same power that lived in Jesus lives in us. It lives in you. And you could be made well today. And so I want to I wanna extend an opportunity for anyone who has not accepted Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Hey, listen, today is your day. Don't, don't fight it. I know that maybe you're kind of saying, well, I mean, I'm not really sure. I'm not the best person. I'm not all together. I don't have it all together. Listen, you are a perfect candidate for Jesus Christ to change. Amen. Because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God, but Jesus, but for the blood of Jesus, we would all be doomed to hell. And so I want to explain to you the importance of asking Jesus into your heart. See, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the Bible says that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know who that includes? That includes you and that includes me. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter how bad you have been. It doesn't matter what you just did. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And why is that so important? See, the penalty for our sins is death. Oh, hallelujah. When we sin, when we do things that are bad, that displease God, we deserve death. But see, Jesus said, Father, I'll be the one that takes the penalty for their sins. And that's why he died on the cross for us. So we don't have to pay the price. Come on, if you've ever been in prison, if you've ever been before the judge, if you've ever been in court before, I know you know that feeling that comes because you don't know what's going to happen to your destiny. But I want to let you know that Jesus is the one that said, hey, I'm going to take your place. No matter how bad you are, no matter what sins you've committed, he said, Father, I died for them and I'll take the penalty of their sin. How can you say no to that? So if you've never asked Christ Jesus into your heart today, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. It's so easy. The Bible says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe, I know that I'm a sinner. And I need somebody to help me and save me. And I believe that the blood of Jesus, your blood, is what can save me. And I ask you to come into my heart and change me, make me new, make me into the person I'm supposed to be. Cleanse me, wash me, help me to live for you. Thank you for what you've done on the cross for me. I accept your offer of sacrifice. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hey, listen, the Bible says that if you prayed that prayer, 
There is a crowd of witnesses in heaven right now that is throwing you a personal party. They are excited because the Bible says that there, that there are witnesses that are cheering you on when one sinner repents. Now you might be saying, well, you know, I've already given my, my life to God and, you know, I'm just, I'm not where I used to be. And, and you still, you know, the enemy is still making you feel that guilt and that shame because he's accusing you for not being where you're supposed to be. Well, we're going to pray for you right now because listen, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And all it is, is just a prayer. You know what, my friend? You are just one prayer away from being restored back to that place where you're connected with God. So I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would forgive me. I'm sorry for the things that I've done. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me new. And I recommit myself to you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, come on, saints. We got, we got something to be excited about. Oh, God, let me tell you, every promise that God has for you is yes and amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, he says, I know the things that I have planned for you, declares the Lord. Things to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you. And so God, those same promises that the Lord has been storing up and waiting to release to you, it's yours. Just receive that today. Amen. Listen, if you gave your life to the Lord or you rededicated your life, we want to know about it. So type something in the chat box or you can inbox us, direct message us. Um, we want to help you continue the progression of growth. We don't want you to want you to get uh, uh, sidetracked in any way, but we want you to fulfill your purpose in God. So let us know about it. We love you so much. And I, I, I just want to say, Minister Yvonne, again, thank you so, so much for uh, coming and, and ministering to us today. And, and I know that people have been set free. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, we're going to pick up an offering. Uh, we're going to pick up an offering because we have, God has blessed us. And you know what? We have to make sure that we are in a covenant relationship with God in regards to our finances. You know, we, we don't have any problem when it comes to paying our insurance. Or we don't have any problem when it comes to getting those things that we desire. But when it comes to giving God what he asks from us, then we got a problem. And so I want to read a few scriptures of what the word of God says. In 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 9, it says, uh, chapter 9, verse 6, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he, his, he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a child forgiver. And then I want to go on to verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. And so we know that there are promises that are connected to our covenant relationship with God. And as a co as covenant believers, uh, uh, we have a responsibility to continue to do what the Lord says. Now listen, he says, I don't want you to give to me uh, because you feel com uh, compelled, you feel forced. The Lord does, look, listen, really, the Lord doesn't need our money, but he needs our heart. He says, I don't even want you to give out of necessity. He says, but I want you to give out of the generosity of your heart and believe what my word says. And so with that, we have several ways that you can actually give. You can give by text and it's on the screen right now. Um, you can give also by cash app. Uh, we have our cash app there on the screen. And then if you feel that you wanna mail in a check, you are more than welcome to mail in a check to us. 
we're going to pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for every gift mm, that is being sold into your kingdom right now. Oh, God, I pray right now, God, we declare and decree and agree with your word that you said in your word, God, that you would make all grace abound towards us, God, that we would have everything that we need because of our obedience to give to you. And so, Father, bless those hands that have what you give them to give, God. And we just wave it before you right now in expectation, God, whew, that you're going to multiply our seed. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise right now. Come on, right where you are in your home. Just bless him right now. Give him a hand of praise. And listen, with your seed, I want you just to expect God to do what he said he's going to do. He is not a man that he should lie, but he is God Almighty and every promise he says is true. It is yes and amen. So God, we thank you for the offering. I want to say thank you, family. We love you. Um, don't forget, next week, we are going to be coming back again with our series of 911 help. I need to talk to someone. And we have a marriage and family therapist who's going to be with us and who's going to bless us and give us some tools so that we as the people of God not can just get free but stay free. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this service on today. Lord, I pray, God, that your people, Lord God, would have a blessed and a prosperous week, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that every single thing that they need will be met on this week. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, family, have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you in all that you put your hands to do. If you need further prayer, give us a call at 909 367-3066 and someone will be there to answer your call. Until next time, have a blessed and prosperous week.